Okay, so can anybody confirm that you guys are able to see me? See us? Yeah, we can see you. Okay. Um, I'll be happy to take it from here. Okay, go ahead. We getting an echo? Okay, great. Well, welcome everybody. Uh, Genesis Office Hours was awesome. I think we all, all uh, really enjoyed the show and we're kind of continuing some of that conversation here. We have some outstanding professionals who are going to be sharing a little bit about um, how they collaborate, what their business verticals are, and um, how to not on onboard the wrong client. I think it would be good. We have a large panel, so I think I'll just throw, uh, throw the ball around the court. Everybody introduce themselves, tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do professionally, uh, and maybe something uh, rather unusual about your, your work uh, methods uh, that we might find entertaining or we'll start with me. Emily. Are you okay, you kind of broke up, Kathy. Did you say start with me? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's hear about your work for um, So I'm Emily. I um, am a designer that specializes in custom Genesis sites, um, mostly for bloggers, some small businesses. Um, about two and a half years ago, I partnered up with Greg um, for development. And um, so since that time, he, he does all the development for me. Um, I do all the design. Um, and I've had a lot of success with that model um, and just growing my business and um, being able to turn out um, a much better product um, than I was doing when I was trying to go it alone. How long have you guys been collaborating, Emily? So it's been about, I think, two and a half years. Um, I've been doing design for, I don't know, maybe seven, eight years. Um, started on Blogger, actually, and then came over to WordPress. Um, first started out working with Thesis and then discovered Genesis and, and for a little bit tried to uh, you know go it alone just taking uh, child themes and, and customizing them for clients um, but my development skills were pretty seriously lacking and I always felt hampered by that that my you know creatively I wanted to do things that I just wasn't able to do um, so it was really freeing when I um, was able to find a developer to work with where I could focus more on designing um, and really coming up with solutions that were right for my clients and then um, not having to worry about how we were going to actually make those things come to life. So. And can I ask you, uh, before we move on to the, an, another panel member, are you guys geographically uh, close proximity or do you work online together? Yeah, we, we're definitely not geographically close. I'm in San Antonio, Texas. And Greg is up somewhere in Canada. I don't know. He's up where it's cold. <laughs> somewhere in Canada. Yeah, but we're, uh, <laughs> we're in the same time zone, which actually um, is really helpful, I think. So, yeah. Oh, that's it's nice to meet you. I know we have a lot more questions to ask you. I'm a big fan of your work, and um, I, I'm very happy to meet you today at Genesis Thanks. Camp. So let's let's throw the ball to Greg. Hi, uh, my name is Greg Young. Uh, I go uh, online by Hard Boiled Greg. Uh, I'm the other half of uh, of Emily White's uh, designs. Uh, I'm a freelance WordPress developer. I've been working with WordPress since 2008. Uh, started off uh, just making sites for my own purposes, uh, niche sites for affiliate marketing. Um, when uh, Google changed uh, the uh, the ranking algorithm for uh, lower quality, uh, thinner niche niche sites, uh, I uh, took a look at what I was doing and decided that I was having uh, the most fulfilling experience uh, doing the the site development. So uh, I decided to to pivot and uh, sell that service to others who uh, uh, wanted. Uh, WordPress sites, uh, custom themes developed. Uh, 
been uh, specializing in Genesis uh, since uh, since before it was Genesis, since uh, Brian Gardner's Revolution themes. Uh, I thought originally that I had to have uh, both sets of skills, that I had to be a designer and a developer. So I was kind of floundering, uh, uh, trying to do everything, and uh, really my my skills in design and my and my uh, creativity. Uh, uh, it's it's it wasn't it wasn't me measuring up to what to what it should be. So uh, I uh, connected with with Emily uh, on online and uh, was able to just focus on the development end and uh, then instantly enjoyed a hundred percent of what I was doing day in and day out instead of only only fifty percent. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. And and where in Canada are you? I'm sorry, I got disconnected a little bit. So I'm in, uh, I'm just south of Winnipeg, Manitoba. I'm about uh, half an hour uh, north of the of the border, the uh, North North Dakota border, um, about eight hours away from Minneapolis, two and a half hours away from, from Fargo. So not not too far far north. Awesome, awesome. Well, Warren, would you like to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your business and maybe how you got started and where you hope to go with things? Yes, yeah, sure. Um, my name is Warren Denley. I work for um, well, my wife and I have a company called DIY Website Coach. Um, we started that out to help out people just getting online for the first time. Um, so our focus really is the first-time entrepreneur or um, you know the people trying to find their way online. Um, as such, we tend not to do a lot of custom work. We do a lot of Genesis um, theme customization, I guess, is we, what you call what we do. Um, <clears throat> I'm from a very technical background, so you know I love WordPress. I love getting in there. I love cutting the code. I love playing with it. But I also and very cognizant of the fact that I don't need to reinvent the wheel all the time. So as much as I do like to code, we tend to play more with, you know, just using the, the recognized plugins and configuring them rather than writing code from scratch. But every now and then I get the chance to get in and, uh, you know, play in the template files and whatnot. Um, my wife, Helena, who can't join us today, unfortunately, uh, is the other half of the business and she tends to be the more design person. Um, she went through a long period of time where she did not want to call herself a designer but every time I put something up she'd say, oh that needs to move there and this would look better in that colour and all that sort of stuff and um, eventually she got to the point where she was actually happy enough to say yes, she was the design side of the partnership. Um, <laughs> Yeah, no, this is, look, I've always said she does a very good job of turning out beautiful, clean, uh, functional sites. Um, and she kept saying, oh, but there's all these other people that, you know, make sites look so much better with all these fancy graphics and stuff. And I said, that's not graphic design, that's illustration. Um, and it's taken her a while to get to the point where she recognises that what she does is actually a valid style and there's a lot of people now that want that sort of style. So, yeah. Uh, absolutely. And so do now the everybody wants to know how much time you work together and live together and I mean that must be like a lot to balance. Uh, my husband is a he owns his own business as well, but he does not work from home. So I think we would kill each other. Um very interesting. We nearly killed each other many times early in the partnership and the reason was that we were both trying to be both sides of the business, I think. Um, instead of recognizing where our talents were, to start out, we would take, you know, I'd take one site and she'd take another site and we'd try and work from start to finish that way. Um, and we used to get really frustrated because, you know, she'd be sitting there going, oh, how do I, um, you know, what CSS do I use to make this do that? Um, and I'd be sitting there pulling my hair out going, it just doesn't look right. I'm working on it doesn't look right. Can you help me? Um, and yeah, it took us a while to get to the point, but eventually we realised she should do the graphics and the the you know the look of the site, and I should just do what I need to do to make it look the way she says it should look. Since we got to that point, things have been a lot smoother. <laughs> well, it sounds like a good a good work work way of working. I I think there is a real. Uh, 
two different ways of approaching web design in two important roles and I'm better at making it look good and, and presenting content whereas I when I work with a developer I like to, to just free my mind for that and the branding part and the client care part so that they can work on how it functions and I, I'm so intrigued by uh, Emily and Greg's collaboration too because I think that's a really powerful duo and a really powerful way to grow a business. So I, I'm, I have lots more questions for you guys. But maybe we should take a moment and let Jesse, I think a lot of people in the community know you, Jesse, but um, tell us a little bit about um, how you got started and where you're going to. Well, I started uh, Peterson Media Group the very first month buying Thesis, and I almost asked for my money back because I had no idea what hooks and actions and filters were, and I'm like, where are the files? And maybe two or three months later, Genesis was out, and I was a personal friend of Brian Gardner, and I somehow got on the page for de for develop uh, recommended developers, and that's been great. And it's just gone on from there. And I kind of lucked out that design started going towards minimalism because I am not a designer. And I also wasn't a great coder. I, I pretty much classified myself as a consultant who could customize and get people the results that they, they were asking for, the leads or the sales or um, just the blog look that they wanted by customizing the child themes. And it's just been in the last year or so that I've really gone hardcore on the development, got PHP Storm. So I've joined forces with the WP Valet and I have a junior developer that I've been working with and teaching him Genesis and the team also has a designer so if the project has budget then we throw in a, develop, a, a designer and everything that's come back I'm just amazed there's no way I would have done something like that but I can develop it so um, if it's still minimalism I'll, I'll handle it I, I love just Brian Gardner's whole no sidebar. I can I can do that for breakfast, but um, if it's if it's intricate or it's color palettes and stuff, I will defer to a designer every single day. <laughs> That's funny. Um, so, what would you say? Well, I'll ask you the first next round of questions in terms of business verticals. So, we've talked a lot about subscription being the new um, income path. We've talked a lot about client work. What are some of the alternative business verticals for you, Jesse? I think you do some teaching. Um, anything you can share with us about powerful business verticals and maybe some things you'd like to nurture in the coming years? Sure. I started out doing affiliate stuff for my clients hosting and about two or three years in I realized that I had moved from Bluehost to HostGator to Media Temple and then I was moving to WP Engine and I had a ton of logins, I had different configurations, I was losing sleep over security. Uh, so I just moved everybody to WP Engine and I said, I'm getting a big enough account, you pay me and I get the big account and I pay out through the nose every month and that's a nice vertical for me. It's January is like a second Christmas, it's Christmas Christmas. Um, but then the rest of the year kind of feels like I'm paying for nothing, but the money is already there. Uh, another one is the teaching. Uh, every course is, is a nice vertical and some more on the way. And one just came out this week. And then the next thing I'm working on is the theme shop. So got lots of irons in the fire. Oh, very interesting. I'll, I should t say a little bit about myself and what I do too. I'm, I'm a designer. I'm actually a fine artist. My background's in fine art. And I discovered uh, Genesis at, during graphic design phase. I've sort of ridden the digital evolution. I started out in art school long before digital photography even existed. Not that I'm that old, but uh, so I've, I've been fortunate and I've had lots of good help and mentors along the way. Most of what I do is client work. Um, I do some mid-sized business work. Last year I did a lot. It wasn't really agency work, but I got some jobs through a business consultant group. They outsourced work to me, and that was 
that was an interesting experience. They had no web background, so uh, it wasn't a perfect fit, but it was good for last year. Um, I have not done agency work, um, but so that's a little bit about me. I'm sort of a, a one-man band here at the studio. I have one staff person, and then I freelance, hire out freelance help um, or collaborate with developers. Um, so that's a little bit about me, but more about Emily. Emily, do you have any tips for us on collaborating? And when you first started collaborating with Greg, was that your first big collaboration, or is that a, a way you're comfortable working uh, professionally? And what are your m most interesting business verticals? Sorry, am I there? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I was on mute. Um, I feel fortunate that uh, I feel like I. Uh, there was some luck at play. Greg was actually the first uh, developer that I worked with or ever outsourced um, outsourced to. Um, and, and, and and the last. And the last, yeah. <laughs> We're hoping. Although, I, I don't know if you listened to Jenny and um, Shay's talk about the divorce plans. Um, I, don't, I don't have a backup plan, so uh, Greg better not quit. But... Um, it it really worked out well. Um, I have I have done design work for a couple other developers, um, and I'm open to that as my schedule allows. Um, but um, I don't know. I don't know if it was just a you know a personality match or a, a match in you know um, um, communication styles or what. But there's a lot of sort of um, underlying factors, I think, um, that make a good partnership work. Um, and we just seem to have those things that kind of clicked and fell into place. Um, it's, been, it's been a good experience. I know that I've heard from other designers who have tried to do this before um, and haven't had as much success. So I really um, do feel fortunate that um, I kind of lucked into a, a good situation right off the bat. Um, what percentage of your studio work is collaboration versus client work and subscriptions? Um, yeah, so, so uh, if I understand the question right, so all of my work is client work. Um, I don't have any, Greg and I are working on sort of the theme shop. It kind of got put on the back burner just a little bit. We got sort of a, a, a log jam of client work that we need to um, get squared away, but so right now everything is pretty much um, client services. I really, I know that um, I'm probably leaving a lot of money on the table as far as support and maintenance and subscription type things, um, but I kind of don't want to do that stuff. So I actually, um, you know, I like to refer people to places like WP Site Care or someone like that for, um, you know, ongoing maintenance, that type of thing. Um, so my goal when I have clients is to, to deliver a product to them and a theme for them, to train them well on it, and um, and have them kind of be able to to move forth and um, and um, you know take care of their site on their own. Um, I use you know the WP 101 videos, and I try to give them as many tools. Um, the large majority of my clients are bloggers, and bloggers tend to be a little bit um, sort of DIY, um, you know, leaning towards DIY or experience with WordPress. I don't feel like I have to do a lot of you know. Um, training and, and ongoing help with my clients. Um, I, I do kind of try to pride myself in really good client um, relationships and, and how I work with my clients. So I have some very loyal clients. I have clients that, you know, I've done their site redesigns, you know, three different times because I've worked with them over the past seven years. They do come back to me and, and I do get a lot of ongoing work from them, whether it's additional functionality that they want to add to their site or graphic design work, print work, that sort of thing. So um, I do have a lot of, you know, what I would say ongoing clients, but not in any sort of formal maintenance or subscription um, capacity. Oh, that's awesome. I think word of mouth is still a really powerful way to grow business and giving that, you know, good quality, good quality customer service makes your job more rewarding too. So that that's awesome. Greg? I'll ask you the same questions. You're, you have an interesting business, I think. How do you structure your income verticals or professional growth verticals? Um, well, I have only two to three clients, uh, all, all designers. And um, I, I, 
I don't like the um, client acquisition, um, uh, sizing up, interviewing, uh, getting all of the details. I think that is a very, uh, a very tricky skill, and uh, just maybe through through lack of practice, I am I am not great at it. So I am very thankful that I you know partner with a designer like like Emily who goes through all that, finds the clients. Uh, discovers their their needs, creates a, a mock-up, hands it over to me, and then I only communicate with with, with Emily and uh, only get uh, direction from from her. So it's a very it's a very uh, stress-free uh, way way for for me to work. Uh, I get the design, I give it back, I get I get paid. Um, as far as as other verticals, yeah, I I desperately want to get our our team store up and up and running, but. I like to play video games too, and so uh, I've got a you know, I've got a very low low stress uh, week, and um, so when the client work slows down and we'll get back to working on the uh, uh, our our side project, I just want to add um, talking about about maintenance plans and and whatnot, and and Emily, uh, you know she. She walks the clients through the site, records videos. Um, we also are very deliberate in developing themes that are extremely user client friendly. Um, we don't like to have them have to enter any uh, HTML or CSS tags or anything. We we use uh, we use custom fields extensively. Uh, create really uh, tight meta boxes, uh, uh, different different uh, WYSIWYG editors throughout the site, uh, and uh, lately we've been uh, including several custom widgets with our with, with our sites. So uh, with them, just being able to mostly fill in the blanks for all the content that they want to appear on on the site, um, we have very few things come back and break and whatnot. So and when they do, em Emily talks to them about that. So that's not something that I have to worry about anyway. <laughs> Awesome. That is a beautifully streamlined work situation you have. And I, I think it's such a luxury, uh, especially as a freelancer or, or a mother with four children, which I do not have four children, but to be able to do one thing at a time um, is is really a powerful way of working. And, 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 and I, I admire that kind of um, clarity that you bring to your work like that. That's that's very nice. I'm glad you have enough work to make that happen. I'm curious about how people get their clients and and where their clients come from and how they market their to get their clients. But let let's ask let's ask Warren a little bit more about he and Helen's verticals and where do you get your clients from and I think we do something rather similar. I I sit down side by side and do training and teach do it yourselfers a lot myself too. So yeah, so I guess you know we started in the training space, and then we found that um, even with the training, there were some people that just wanted us to do the site, so we sort of fell into the sites for quite a while. But uh, now we're actually looping back to the training. We created a course earlier this year, ran our first course, which we've been talking about for about four years, and finally, man, yeah, it took a while to get to that point. Um, but what we found with that course was, you know, one, we, we got really good feedback that uh, that was what people wanted, um, that they were really, you know, what we were really able to help them get the understanding they needed to do it themselves. And on the back end of that, we've had some really good sites come out from those clients, so I was very, very happy with that. Um, so we'll be putting more focus into that side of things and, and you know, just, uh, I guess, cleaning up the course, retweaking it, re-releasing it. Um, we've got a basically a structure now for a whole series of courses that we're going to put into an academy. Um, it's going to be called WP Website Academy. Um, so you'll see more about that come out soon. Um, <clears throat> other than that, we're also looking more at getting into the support vertical. Um, we've teamed up with GoWP. Um, we've got white label products, so we're able to offer that on to our clients at a small margin for us and, and still give them a really great service and not have a heck of a lot of our time taken out with fulfillment. Basically, we have to get involved in the, the onboarding um, and then just keep an eye over things. And other than that, GoWP take care of all the work process. That's 
you know, really good as well, so we'll build that side of our business. Um, yeah, they're probably two main... Oh, no, sorry, we've got a, a membership site coming up as well. So as well as the academy, which is the individual courses, we're going to have a, a learning centre type um, membership site where there's a whole bunch of training videos in there on how to use WordPress and then we'll do regular Q&A webinars and we'll also do regular um, content webinars just on how to, I guess, add different features to, to your site as you go. So that's the sort of things we're focusing on now, it's sort of diversifying from the actual doing of the sites and going into a lot more of the, the leveraged um, income streams, I guess. And how will you market the the for services? Or is that a inappropriate <clears throat> question? No, no, no. It's certainly <laughs> an appropriate question. Gosh, wouldn't we all love to know how to get a lot more clients? Um, <laughs> I, I guess in the first instance, it's certainly our maintenance product will be marketing to the people that we have actually done sites for. Um, you know, we've had a number of them that keep contacting us with you know they want little tweaks along the way. We've had a couple of people on a maintenance package for a while. Um, but basically, we haven't been servicing them to the level that we would like in terms of, um, you know, the, the package through GoWP is really good in that, you know, they can have an unlimited number of 30-minute fixes per month, and fixes is a broad term for anything that can be done in 30 minutes. So, you know, that could be installing plugins and a whole bunch of things. So, you know, that's the sort of level that we have always wanted to offer, but I've never offered it because I just couldn't keep up with that sort of demand. So having a reliable service that we can leverage is going to allow us to finally give our clients what we've always wanted to give them. Um, that's awesome. Yeah, that's really awesome. Yeah, it, it is. I'm, I'm really impressed. You know, we tried some different ones and they didn't quite work out for us and this time I think we found a winner which is great. Um, but in terms of how we're marketing you know, the courses and the membership and stuff, yeah look we've got a a smallish list. We've got about 1,200 people on our list, so that's a starting point, obviously. Um, but what we found when we did the the first round of the course is that webinars and marketing those webinars through Facebook ads actually brought us quite a bit more traffic. So I guess that will be our starting point as we go forward and try and um, you know grow our subscription and grow our membership and grow our courses. Um, and beyond there, I'll just have to learn more and more more about marketing, I guess. <laughs> well, that sounds like an an excellent strategy, really. That's the first place I would start, and then maybe move into some Google AdWords or Google Ads or something like that. But really, good strategy, I I think. And I'm not a marketer, so. <laughs> um, yeah, we've been learning a lot more about it lately. Um, went to Traffic and Conversion Summit in Sydney last weekend, the weekend before, which is time just gets away. Um, and yeah, some really great stuff that we learn out of that. So it's time to knuckle down and implement some of that in our business. Awesome. Well, thanks. Thanks, Warren. Jesse, uh, what about you? How do you feel about onboarding clients? I know you have some insights for us that you're going to share about when not to on onboard a client. What are the red flags? Oh, I've got a big list of red flags. Oh. Um, I've got a rather, how could I say this nicely, um, unfriendly contact form. It's a little bit long, and it's prefaced with a bunch of things about when I'm going to be available, what this contact form is not for, and uh, it's got budget striations. Uh, it specifically says if you don't have $4,800, you don't need to be contacting me for a theme or, or a whole site project. Um, so if they make it through the contact form, they're pretty likely going to get a reply if they didn't say, I've got a $1,000 budget and I want a theme. Um, so then my other red flag is a really short contact, and it says, call me for details. No, you don't get to talk to me that easily. You've got to tell me something to get my time. So that gets a real quick kickback. Um, people who take a day or two to reply to me when I usually reply within the hour if it was submitted with a, a reasonable time of the day. Um, so things like that and an urgency or you're the fifth developer to try to finish this project. Um, 
kind of starts to seem like maybe they didn't have four bad developers. Maybe it's the person sending the contact. Um, things like that I've just noticed over the years, and I've set up some new rules about who I will and will not proceed further with, and some still sneak by. Uh, I just recently had one, and it, uh, we were glad to finish, and that will probably be our last contact once everything is all done. And I'm in the process of landing a couple of proposals, and I'm not sure, you know, depending on how soon the final one comes in, whether or not I actually do want to follow through with it because of the process getting the proposal through. So how do your clients find you? Through your contact form, and how do they get to your contact form, Jesse? I would say 60 to 70 percent come through the Studio Press recommended page. The other ones are a combination of word of mouth or pure Google. Uh, and it's starting to pick up now just from Twitter and just from Treehouse and just from my plugins. So I expect some of those to increase once the theme shop gets launched. And we're actually going to go ahead and keep the partnership going with WP Valet to do the support. So product support is a lot easier than just general support because it's a finite box of, of things to, to be aware of. It's not like my site went down, what do I do? It's going to be nice and simple. And no, uh, $100, no, that's not going to get the job done. <laughs> I have had a request in the last year for $500. And I think it was something about Facebook-ish. Can you make this like Facebook for $500? Wow, yeah. It's a rough one. It's a rough yeah. one. <laughs> Comparisons to million-dollar sites. No, I'm sorry. Well, that's really, uh, that's really good. Do you turn down a lot of work just because you don't have time? Have you gotten to a pattern where you had to just turn down work for periods of time? Yeah. Uh, I've gone through periods where I turn around 80 to 90%. Uh, yeah. I tried to refer them, but I can tell by some of the people that are contacting me, I would not want to refer them to my friends. So I'm kind of left with, I don't think, ask around, because I'm, I'm not going to give you my friend's contact. Oh, um, that's awesome. That's good Good friendship. That's a good rule to, well, to me. Yeah. I don't want them to email me. Yeah. <laughs> what do you send yeah. me? Oh, I'm, I'm nicer than that, most of the time. I guess... I've been doing this uh, full time for uh, about four years now. So, and I, I'm sort of a grassroots girl here. We, I belong to a running group, and I started doing websites for people in my running group, and um, piggybacking on a mentor, and helping do sites, and learning how to, you know, build sites for clients, and 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 work the graphic design in the background with a mentor. Uh, so I'm a little do-it-yourself or here myself as well, but I every year in January, this is my advertising plan, every year in January I uh, do one complimentary website. And that one complimentary website, I try to target a website that is to a good cause or that has a decent sized audience because if you make a site for a blogger, well, you'll get some refers from their friends and audiences. But if you do a site for a large, um, like, uh, nonprofit or something that has a large audience and community that you're really giving this powerful tool to that will help them grow their community and you fully empower them with everything you've got, that one website will bring me enough work for the year. Uh, I've been very fortunate in that way. So now I even give it an award. You won the the the, the web award that year. And, that's one of the things I do to advertise and spread word of mouth and grow my business. But it's worked out really well so far. And it's that one job where I'm kind of the client. So, you know, because it's a gift more or less, I can kind of call some of the shots. And it's fun to do that, that, that one project. Plus, the upside is when my friends or family or you know, the needy people in, in the world that come asking for a free website, I can say apply to be the free one this year. I do one free one every year. So kind of, you know, kills two birds with one stone. So I, I like that too. Um, Emily, what's your, um, 
what's your re what's your advice to uh, everyone at Genesis Camp about you know client relationships and and developing those ongoing relationships? What's your onboarding like with clients? Um, so like Jesse, I do have a pretty involved contact form um, for uh, people to submit you know potential jobs. Um, I look for those red flags. I've gone back and forth on whether or not to um, include budget ranges in that question. I just find that I really have to have it on there. It just helps to um, figure out if people are even in the right you know, ballpark and stuff. So at this point, I do have that question on there. Um, and then I like to ask specific questions about you know, why they're wanting to do this at this time and, and what are some of the goals they're hoping to achieve. And if they can't state, you know, um, some actual, you know, business goals or um, those sorts of things. Um, I, this is a sort of a red flag for me that they're probably not ready for this. I get a lot of requests for um, from bloggers who would really just be better served with um, like a studio press child theme, maybe someone to customize colors and a logo and stuff. And I've done those in the past. Um, I actually prefer not to do those now. Now that I have Greg on my team, I feel like I have, you know, these great tools. I would rather... Um, kind of reserve time in my calendar for these larger jobs that are going to be higher paying jobs. Um, the, the smaller sort of customization jobs, I feel like those clients um, end up sucking more time um, than, than some of these higher paying clients. Um, so, you know, while we can from the outset say, okay, this is going to include just these, you know, few things, it always um, becomes sort of a communication nightmare for them to try to, and not just, not their fault, but just them trying to understand what it is that, uh, you know, a theme customization includes. Um, so recently I've tried to just kind of turn all those away and refer those out to, to other people um, and just take on sort of these larger custom jobs. Um, I think I totally forgot your, <laughs> where we started with this. but um, Oh, my God, me too. I have no idea. <laughs> um, yeah, so onboarding. So, so if they make it through that, that initial contact form, um, uh, and, and their budgets align and their um, timeline is realistic. That's another big problem I have is I'm usually booked several months out and so if someone needs you know, a website within a month or whatever, I'm going to have to um, refer them out. But if, if they're on target and they have you know, good stated goals and they, I, I feel like they have a direction for where they want to go with this, then the next step is um, usually a phone call with them, um, about an hour-long call where we, we go into some depth about those goals and things. Um, I do a lot of listening and just taking notes during that call. Um, I don't like to offer a lot of, um, you know, tons of free advice and stuff on that call. Um, but then I'll prepare. I do a pretty um, involved proposal um, that I send over. I, I use bid sketch for my proposals. Um, and then if they accept the proposal, um, they do a 50% deposit to get in my schedule. And that's due when they accept the proposal. And then about a week or so before um, their time is, has come in the, in the schedule, we'll do another call where we'll go um, more in depth. Between those times, I have them do a second questionnaire um, that goes into a lot more depth about sort of um, the needs for the site and, and their audience or, or what have you, their customers, um, so that when we get on that second call, I have their questionnaire. Um, if, if they're bloggers, I usually have them do like a Pinterest board because they usually are full of lots of visual ideas about what they want to do. So I kind of take all that information and on that second call we delve into that stuff um, before I get started. So oh, it's a great process and, and having the multiple questionnaires saves you a lot of back and forth time you can go back and refer to that. Do you go back and look at those entries more than once or Abs are you pretty absolutely. good? Absolutely. No, because usually, uh, you know, I usually have multiple projects going at the same time and I have to, you know, re remember, you know, kind of what we're doing on this project. So I do, um, I add that to, I do use Basecamp and so I'll add their questionnaires into Basecamp so that I can go back and reference those things um, as I'm working on their design um, and such. So it's, it's really help for me, helpful to me to have um, all of that stuff sort of in writing. And so you take 50% on deposit. I do the same thing. And then do you take the final payment at the time of launch, before launch, after launch? Do you do 30 days? I do it before launch. Um, seven, it's due within seven days of delivery of the demo site, or, or which is on um, our server. So we, we preview the site to them on our server, um, and then 
you know, they can give us any little feedback. At that point, I, you know, we don't make, you know, major changes and stuff, but we'll work out any, you know, bugs or small adjustments. Um, and then payments due, I say, within seven days um, before we can install anything or hand over any files to them. Um, and that has really worked out well. Um, I used to say that payment, final payment was due before install. Um, and then I think it was maybe Bill Erickson that he ties his final payment to a deliverable, and I, I took his advice on that and, um, and, and changed it because a lot of people will just indefinitely hold off on install because um, they're not ready, whatever, and my final payment is sort of hanging in the wind. So to tie it to, you know, here's your demo site, we've delivered a site to you that works, um, you know, pay up, that usually works. I haven't had That's any problems with that. Yeah, that's brilliant. I love that. I'm going to start uh, doing that too because I always say at the time of the launch your final payment is due. I'm totally moving that over. That's I mean, we great. have, I don't know how many we have, Greg, but like probably five sites that have never launched still. They're just sort of on our, you know, development site. But we're all paid in full and I don't really care if they sit there. I mean, when they come back to us, they'll have to kind of work into our schedule as far as when we can, you know, launch for, for them since they've let them sit dormant so long. Mm, very interesting. Good, good. Greg, do you want to add anything to that, or do you just, you know, work in the background getting it done? Yeah, I worked on a couple recently where they paid enough in the first invoice or so that the rest was, was gravy, and we actually forgot to send the last invoice, but it didn't hurt because we didn't lose any money yet, and um, once you've been paid in full, like if, if it's 50% and 50% and the project drags on but they've already paid, those are just, those are nice. It's like, okay, we'll work you in soon because mm -hmm. now we've moved on to the next project. Yeah. Warren, what is your onboarding uh, process? You do, uh, con do you have them fill out questionnaires, etc.? Uh, we have a basic form on our site that they fill in uh, before they work with us. It's sort of, you know, the basics of who they are, what their business is, what they're trying to achieve. So it's not probably as convoluted as some of the forms we've heard about, but it's enough that if people are prepared to fill the whole thing out, then they're probably serious about the project. Um, we do full payment up front. Um, and the reason we do that is because at the end of the market we're playing in, they are smaller sites. You know, they're only up to about two thousand um, <clears> dollars. <throat> so there's we we found that if we tried to split that, or when we were splitting that, we had the problem that yeah they'd start it and it'd drag on forever, and we were doing a lot of chasing. And I think we ended up delivering them all, but there was one that dragged out for like six seven months before we got that final payment. So we, we state that it's pa full payment up front and that really weeds out the people who aren't serious about it. If they're not going to put that money down up front, then they're probably not going to give us the rest of the stuff that they need to deliver the site, you know, the content and answering questions as we go, etc. Um, so that's how we do it. Um, then once that's done, we have an initial call with them, which we say is half an hour, but if we find it generally goes 45 minutes to an hour. And that's where we really flesh out, you know, what are their goals for the site? What are they trying to achieve? Um, who's their target market? Get a feel for the sort of um, sites that they do and don't like and why they do and don't like them so that that can sort of guide us in our selection theme and then the customization that goes on top of that. And then once we've got all that information, we go away and we, we work out what theme's going to work for them. We send them that back and say, here you go, this is what we're envisaging. This is how we're thinking the different areas will work for you. Uh, they give us a tick and then basically we schedule them in. Really good, really good. Uh, we're getting a couple questions. One question, and uh, Greg, if you're still with us, I'll start with you. Um, what are the important tools that you use in your business? I, I guess you and Emily use Basecamp. That's probably one. Do we have Greg? I see. Hello? 
Hello, Greg. Are you coming through now? Am I coming through now? Yes. Oh, okay. sorry about that. Um, yeah, we use uh, Emily and I. Well, I shouldn't say that. Emily uses Basecamp, oh, and okay. uh, <laughs> and occasionally, like, uh, she'll bring me onto it if uh, a more technical feedback is required for uh, the client at that at that time. Or if she's going going away, she'll bring me on, on onto Basecamp so I can communicate with the client. But mostly, mostly I don't. Emily and I communicate through through Slack. We have our our own Slack team, and uh, uh, eighty percent of our conversations are just through through a text chat. And then uh, every now and then we'll have we'll have a voice call. I think this is the first time we've seen each other on video uh, in a in in a year since we did office hours. A, a, a year ago. Um, Your beard's longer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, just uh, as far as collaborating, uh, just a reliable and something that we can that we can archive too. Uh, go back and uh, uh, you know say uh, this is what we had said before. Or, um, and uh, it's it's Slack is much more efficient than searching through through email. Oh, I totally agree. It's just I could never live without it now. And and what about you, Jesse? What would you say are some of your important tools that you use in all of your business? Well, since I've flipped more to the developer side, PHP Storm, Sublime mm -hmm. Text, um, I've recently switched over to Forklift from Transmit because of the um, asynchronous folder transfers, it, it uploads full WordPress installs a lot faster, about three or four times faster. Wow. Um, Google Docs is what we use for treehouse collaboration, but I'm not a big fan. I like to do everything in IA Writer and write in Markdown, um, but it's not great for collaboration. Um, Evernote is good for client calls, just to knock things down real quick and be able to share it. And I've switched over to Mail app for all of the theme shop stuff, um, getting out of Gmail, just so I have all the email come down to to my computer itself. Oh, great! I use um, I use QuickBooks, and I do all my invoices through QuickBooks and quotes and invoicing, yeah. uh, and I use the Adobe Suite. Um, those are my businessy things that I use. Um, what about uh, what about you, Warren? What what are the tools that you would recommend, or you find to be the most important ones for your business? Yeah, that's probably one side of things that we're not as good on. Um, we use the Adobe Suite as well for the graphics side of things. To be honest, the the um, theme customization I tend to do directly in the um, WordPress editor. I know that's not the best workflow, but since I don't write a lot of code, it, it's it tends to work. Um, <clears throat> in terms of other tools, we're just at the moment looking at implementing Help Scout for our help ticketing, etc. Um, that, that is something that we have struggled with: is is managing all the emails from clients. Um, what else are we looking at? Yeah, but, oh, I make uh, a lot of use of ScreenFlow for recording videos and, and training videos and stuff. Um, so that's that's probably the biggest tool that I use. But yeah, other than that, we're really behind in the tool stakes, I would say. Emily, did you answer that question already? Um, I'll add a few more tools that I use. Oops, hold on, make sure. Okay, make sure I'm on mute. Um, so I design an illustrator. Um, I rarely use Photoshop. Um, so I use Basecamp for client. Um, you know, all my client interaction, I use BidSketch for my proposals. I use FreshBooks for my accounting, which I, I like how it integrates um, really nicely with, with uh, BidSketch, just converting those proposals right to an invoice. Um, I use Slack with my communication with Greg. Um, see if I'm forgetting anything. I really love Wonderlist. It's just a little app I use on my desktop and on my phone for all of my own personal. Um, I sort of, I create a an item for each client has, you know, and then I have sub items under those. And so I even start a, every day I try to do 
um, sort of a to-do list for today and hit three things on there, you know, that I want to get done. And I, and I do that in, um, in Wonderlist as well. Um, there's any other tools. That may be it kind of for my tools. Oh, that's an awesome list. I, I, I should add the whiteboard in my office. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> um, we do have a couple of different questions. One one request is that uh, the panel post their Twitter links. Um, they're only seeing our first names and they don't know your Twitter links, so if you want to share that, um, I'm not exactly sure how you do that from here in this Hangout, but they're asking for Twitter links. And then um, a, maybe a last question for each of you would be, what tips or tricks do you use to get clients to deliver content on time? Good question. Mm. Warren? Uh, I wish I could say I had something really constructive to, to offer there, but really the only thing we do is you know, be upfront with them about the importance of them delivering it on time. Um, we also encourage them that it doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to be out there. Um, again, this is sort of because of the end of the market we play in is really around those first sites and not necessarily, you know, the big, oh, I've got a name, I've got to have, you know, keep a certain image up. It's really about getting their stuff online. So we just encourage them to, to get it out there. Um, we work with them, I guess, to get over their fear of getting it out there, which is probably the biggest reason we find why they don't deliver it. Um, so yeah, that's good. That's really good. You're not typically waiting on a you're not typically waiting on a copywriter, so that's good to know. No, no, no. There's very rarely copywriters involved when when we're at this end of the market. Okay, and what about you, Jesse? I don't usually need client content because they usually have an existing site, so Perfect. they're usually getting a redesign. If I do need something. Um, I start working on something else and it's kind of the same thing about you know when they've paid in full and they're not being responsive I move on to something else I I don't twiddle my thumbs very well well that's probably very uh, a pro that leads to good production uh, I, I, I started recently scheduling an accountability call or meeting on a weekly basis with do-it-yourself clients so that it gives us it's like having a workout buddy. You're like we both know we have to have this done by that day, and it's worth my time and effort to schedule that call or that conference for that every Friday. I know I'm meeting with the pediatrician's office out of Hartford, Connecticut. We're gonna we're gonna catch up on things, and that's been good for getting people to get content done for me. Um, Emily, do you want to add to that? Um, yeah, content's not a huge thing for me either. I work with a lot of bloggers, so I mean their content's already on their site and it's usually a redesign. I have had a couple of jobs just recently that are going to be larger, um, a couple for um, some larger interior design firms that, that really are lacking content and I've um, recommended a couple of copywriters for them to work with and I actually wrote it into their contract that I would need um, that that would be one of the contingencies for getting started was that they would have to provide me with their content and um, and all the photography for their site so um, with those projects I can see that content is going to be huge I really need to see what we're working with um, before we get started so I've actually kind of built that into um, you know a prerequisite for for actually getting started um, yeah, but typically it's, you know, blogs and stuff and, and their stuff's already pretty set, so. Yeah, it's not like a start from scratch site. Yeah. Very good. Well, I, I, I have to say I've really enjoyed talking with all of you and I, I think you all run really outstanding business models and I, I hope it's been inspiring to other people who may be striving for the level of expertise that you all bring to your individual markets and your individual collaborations and uh, you know it's just been really nice to meet you all and whew, this has been an awesome Genesis camp. It was great meeting you as well. Always fun. I don't see any other I don't see any more questions um, but just you know throw out your uh, Twitter handles for people and I think we'll we'll log out so that they can prepare for the next camp unless anybody would like to add anything else. 
Thank you for looking after us, Kathy. You've been a great host. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I'll second that. <laughs> oh, thanks. I'm a fish out of water. I had to follow. I had to. I was sandwiched earlier in camp between Troy and Lemma. Okay, that was not oh, easy. Gosh. <laughs> and, and, and and now we just followed Carrie. Uh, come on. <laughs> well, at least you're never battling against them like at a word camp when you've got multiple tracks and Lemma's over there and Pippin is over there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what do you do? Yeah. So you got an empty auditorium, and I, right? <laughs> and, and I've been up against Troy Dean at word camp before, so yes. <laughs> wow. I'm, I'm thinking, while we're still talking, they haven't thrown us off yet, I'm thinking of going to word camp in New York this year. It's going to be over Halloween, so I'm thinking that would be a fun one. Trudar is kind of glaring at us, though. I <laughs> oh, He's ready yeah. to play. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll All see right. you guys later. We should clear it for the guys. Yep. Okay. Bye. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye.